James chapter 3. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And even though, God, we read it and we are convicted, we know, God, that you're just doing these things and pointing out these um, attributes in our personality to, to change us. And, Lord, that nobody here would be condemned, but, Lord, anybody here, Father, this morning would be uplifted. And, Lord Jesus, that they would realize that your thoughts for us are good and that we would, uh, Lord, continue to want to uh, tame our tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, this is going to probably offend every single woman in this room, (laughs) including myself. So let's just, we're all on the same page with this, right? This is about our tongues. And so it's an equal opportunity offender in um, James chapter 3. But it's good for us. It's good for us, ladies. James chapter 3. My sisters, do not let any of you, many of you, become teachers knowing that you will receive a stricter judgment. Do you know right above uh, this verse, I have a a face, you know how you make smiley faces? This is a frowning face. (laughs) That you will be held accountable. So, let's all be singers. (laughs) Just kidding. I'm sorry, Debbie. I couldn't resist that one. I, I mean, seriously, you want to be a teacher? God's saying... You're going to hold a higher standard, and I will hold you accountable if you lead someone astray. We take this verse very seriously in our church. Gerald takes this verse very seriously. He studies, and he studies, and I study, and I study to make sure everything I'm telling you is coinciding with the Word of God, and it's not my opinion coming out, but it's God's opinion, because I don't want a stricter judgment. I don't want God to say, why did you get up there and never tell them really who I was? And so here the Bible is warning us, sisters, don't let many of you just strive for that only. If God's leading you into that, praise God, but know that with it comes definitely a stricter judgment. I think of those teachers in our schools that are actually also teaching. Do you remember the uh, movie God's Not Dead and that professor getting up there to try to convince children that there was uh, no God? And you know, in Luke 17, chapter 12, it says, it would be better for a millstone, which is one of these huge stone wheels, to be thrown around your neck and for you to be tossed in the depths of the sea than to lead one little one astray. And, you know, that can be a little one that's sitting in college, too. And I, and I think of those verses, that if we would be responsible for leading one person to go down the wrong path, God forbid that that would be any of us, right? We want to be the ones that are pointing the ways to go towards the Lord and never being the one that condones sin or even worse, teaches against the Word of God. And so verse 2, it says, for we all stumble in many things. Now, in the Hebrew, Hebrew, that word is many matters. And I like that word better. We all stumble in many, many matters. If anyone does not stumble in his word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. It's interesting because your tongue can actually produce your actions. And that's why the Bible is so precise in saying, know what your mouth is capable of doing, because it will also produce what you do many times. If you stumble, we all stumble in lots of different matters, don't we? But if there's anyone in here that can really bite her tongue when she's being attacked verbally, when she can uh, turn around and say something that maybe would cut somebody else even worse than they just cut her. If we can bridle our tongue, the Bible says that we could be perfect. It's such a hard thing to control. And um, we want to make sure that with this, that we have a clear conscience. In Psalms 141, 
verses three and four, it says, set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep a watch over the door of my lips. Isn't that what we want? Is the Lord to be reminding us to be quiet now? Do not incline my heart to any evil thing and to practice work, wicked works. Set a watch over my, guard, over my mouth, Lord. Guard what I'm saying, that I wouldn't be a gossiper, that I wouldn't covet, that I wouldn't cuss. You know, ladies, we have an accent. We speak with a heavenly accent of a heavenly kingdom that we're going to. We shouldn't be speaking the way the world is speaking. We shouldn't be using slang that sounds like cuss words. We need to be speaking with a heavenly accent that people are going, she's not from here. (laughs) Have you ever met somebody with an accent? It's so hard sometimes because you're trying to understand what they say, but you know they're not from your country. Ladies, that's the way we should be doing. We should speak with an accent about Jesus. And we should be, have that reflection just even with the world, with what's happening, that we know what's happening. I was blessed this week. I, I just got back from Seattle. I, I have a dear friend, and it was really funny because we were saying that we've known each other over 30 years. Her husband walks up to me, and he says... I think you two need to do the math. The way I looked at each other, like, what? He goes, you've known each other 41 years. (laughs) Ah, we just went, what? (laughs) Where'd 10 years go? 41 years I've had this friend. And we've been together literally through weddings and through a divorce. Not mine, but someone in the family. And we've been together through death. And then it was another wedding. So that's what I had to go do. And, you know, it was just, I'm so thankful we live in sunshine. It's beautiful there. Ladies, it's beautiful. It's green. It rains every day. And I was going, oh, it's going to be so nice to be back in the sunshine. So next time you're a little disgruntled, maybe where you don't like exactly where you're at, you know what? Sunshine is a beautiful thing, right? And so we want to be thanking God that we live here because I was glad to come home and fly back into nice weather. And here I was up there and... I had to go to lunch with this this group of, or this man and wife. Uh, We were going out, and and we sat down to lunch. And, of course, it got around to the beheadings that have just happened recently in Moore, Oklahoma. I have a friend, a dear friend of mine, that lives uh, two miles away from that. And their whole town is still shaking. Their whole town really cannot believe what happened. Um, in the workplace there. And so we're talking and, and these, I don't know if they were believers or not. And so I just got to share with them. I said, you know, this is all predicted in the Bible. And it's all been at, that we speak with a heavenly accent. I told them about the verses in revelation and I told them what's going to be happening on our face of our earth. Ladies, we speak Jesus. And so with the world that's so hurting and so confused, can you imagine going through watching this happen? and you don't know Christ. Just the riveting fear you'd have. But we know that our God is in control. And so here in verse 2, he says, if he is a perfect woman, if she can bridle her own tongue, and that will bridle the whole body. Verse 3, indeed, we put horses in bits mouths that they may obey us, and we turn them, and we turn their whole body. And you know what? I brought this bit here, all right? And, you know, I'm looking at this little thing, and I was kind of going, I'm not much of horses, so excuse me. So I'm kind of going, I wonder what the bit is. And then I'm thinking, this might be the bit right here, and then this is probably the bit. No, it's this big old brassy thing. This is what they put in the horse's mouth. And it turns them where they're supposed to go. And they're going to be for sale, the bits in the back of the church. (laughs) I've come up with it. I'm going to get it on eBay. They'll be $50. We put them in. We don't have to say anything. Then people come. You know your in-laws are coming over. You pop that bit in. (laughs) You're good to go. Your husband comes home. He's in a bad mood. You pop the bit in. We could be perfect. (laughs) Problem is, is you'll eventually take it out. And here, this is what they put. And this is what Jesus is saying. They put bits in a horse's mouth 
that they may obey and we can turn them and they will turn their whole body. The quicker your tongue is, the more steps you should take to bridle it. Okay. The quicker your wit is, the more steps you should take to bridle it. Some of this is very easy for us to come back and it's always better than what they said, but it's not representing Jesus. And so if you have that tendency when somebody is saying something and you can come back with one more that cuts even worse, take steps and know that that's a weakness in your heart. If you do not bridle a horse with a bit, it will actually run off with its rider. It will become ungovernable and it will throw him. And that's what our mouths do. If we do not govern our mouths, they will overthrow us and they will just go out there. I uh, heard this years ago and maybe some of you have heard it, but there was this little girl and she was caught gossiping. And so she, her mama, she made her go to a pastor and confess that she was caught gossiping. And so this pastor went and got a feather pillow. Have you heard this story? Went and got a feather pillow and he's taken this little girl out. It was a really windy day and he cut open the pillow and he just shook and all these feathers came out. And he looked at the little girl and the wind just blowing them and blowing them. And he looked at this little girl and he said, now you go pick up every single feather you see. And she goes, I can't do that. The wind just took them away. He goes, that's what gossip does. Your mouth. When you speak just something out there, it just goes and goes and goes. And then to try to correct it, it's too late. And so we do not want to be like that. We want to be in control of what we say. Verse four, look at the ships. Although they are large, they are driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Can you imagine that? Just that small rudder and it just turns these massive ships And ladies, that's what our tongue does. And we don't want to ever hurt somebody with our tongues. And yet we do. And ladies, the most people we hurt in our tongues live with us. There are those ones that we hurt usually the most. And those are the ones that we mean it the the less about. That we just get mad and we spew things. And we can just cut. I remember years ago. I was married to Brent Heather and Brent was a big guy and he was muscular and he was tough and he rode a great big Borget bike, a motorcycle, but he hated the word bucko. Don't know why. He must have had something in his little childhood that something was weird there. He hated bucko. Like, like you'd say up to someone, well, cheer up bucko. He, he hated that. And so one day, I remember we got in an argument, hard to believe, I know, but we got in an argument, <clears throat> and I turned around, and he'd said something like, woman, stop that. And I turned around, and I said, okay, bucko, 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 bucko. <laughs> First of all, I was very daring, because he could have flattened me right there, but what I'll always remember was the hurt. Just the hurt. I didn't say a word back. Your words do hurt. They hurt your children. They hurt your husband. They hurt your friends. They crush your mother in law. They hurt. We don't want to be those kind of women. A sailboat with a rudder is turned. Just by this small thing. Verse 5. Where's my group up there? Verse 5. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Verse 
verse 5. Even so, you can just leave that up for a minute. We'll take that in. Even so, the tongue is a little member and it boasts great things. See how great a fire fire kindles. Do you know, it only takes a spark to get a conversation going. Isn't that right? And have you ever noticed that? If you're starting to say, and then someone else has something to say, and someone else has something to say, and then before long, we've just badgered that poor person, and they're not even standing there to defend themselves. And as women of God, we need to stop gossip. Let me tell you a few things that I've learned throughout my many years of being in the church. The best way to stop gossip when there's people getting together and we're going to go down that path of gossip is let's just pray for that person right now. That stops it. Because you know what? The women that you're talking to, and if they're believers, they don't mean to gossip. But it's our tendency to some, sometimes say things, and then it's like that. Listen carefully, because I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> and, and then it just goes with those feathers. So that's a really good one. Another one is just to say, just flat out, let's not be gossipers. And just smile. We don't want to be cruel and mean, but let's just, you know, we're not going to gossip. Let's not be that way. And that we take steps to make things better with our tongue. God's not pleased. You know, I, I love the, the saying that um, you never have to put a lid on a bucket of clams because they'll just keep pulling each other down. You don't have to worry about it. They're just going to keep pulling each other down. Is that what we do to each other? Is that what we do to our sisters in Christ? Is we just continue to pull them down, say something cruel, say something snappy. We don't want to be those women. We don't want to be sour. Have you ever been around a sour person? And you know what? After you've been around that sour person, you feel sour. Don't you? We don't want to be that way. We want to be uplifting and we want to be loving because Jesus is watching us. I'm going to turn over here to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Death and life, Proverbs 18, 21, are in the power of your tongue. We're going to stay in Proverbs just a little bit. So if you want to just jot these down, I'll read them to you. You don't have to look them up. Proverbs 12, 18, and 19. There is one who speaks like a piercing sword, but the tongue of the wise will promote health. The truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Proverbs 26. Where there is no wood... And there's no Facebook. The fire goes out. (laughs) We have a whole new way of gossiping now, don't we, ladies? It's called Facebook. If you have nothing nice to say, what is it? Don't say anything at all. And we need to talk to ourselves about that. We're all tempted to vent, aren't we? I've been tempted to vent. Well, and then you go, ding, 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 ding. That's deleting. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Only way you can vent on Facebook is write it and delete it and never send it. It doesn't glorify God. We need to be speaking with a heavenly accent. Where there is no wood or Facebook, the fire goes out. Where there is no tail bearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood is to fire, so is a contentious woman to kindle strife. The words of a gossiper or a talebearer are like tasty trifles. Look, that's the same thing we're having for lunch. (laughs) God is so good. I just love it when he does those things for me. They're just like little nuggets. He's like, see? We're having the same dessert I'm talking about. Now you're all going to want to stick around. Okay? Like tasty trifles. Not a truffle. A trifle, which is a dessert. They go down into the innermost part of the body. 
fervent lips with the wicked heart are like earthenware covered by silver dross. We don't want to be tearing down with our lips. We don't want to continue in the path that we've been on. And ladies, I know the reason why we vent and we say things is because we're hurt. It's usually never out of vengeance, I don't think. And many times it's not out of, I'm going to, you know, just going to say this because I want people to know. Most of the times we say something is merely a reflection of what's going on in our heart. Isn't that right? But we have to learn how to bridle our tongues. And we have to be aware people are watching. People all over are watching how you live. Let's look at verse six. The tongue is a fire, a world of sin. The tongue is also set apart of our members and it defiles the whole body. It sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. I don't want to be part of anything that's set on fire by hell. Do you? And the Bible actually says it's demonic. I never thought about gossiping and cutting people as being demonic. But it makes sense because you are created in God's image. And if you can lower somebody, then that's just what the enemy would do, wouldn't it be? And what's so sad is when the people hear what you've said. You never think it's going to get back to them, but guess what? It always seems like it does. And we don't want to be part of that course of nature that's set on fire by hell. Every kind of beast, verse 7, and bird or reptile, creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. And we want to stop and think that there was the lion's den, you know, with Daniel. There was uh, the whale that swallowed Jonah. God was working with all these animals, the ravens. They can be tamed. (coughs) Many are not tamed. And for those of you who have ever watched Fatal Attraction, anybody seen that? It's women and men that have this tendency to want to tame a wild animal. And so they will bring it into their home and they will take steps to try to tame this animal or feed bears. There was this little old lady that her husband had died and and she was up in the mountains and she wanted to feed these bears. Do not watch this before you go to bed. You'll be up all night. Ask me how I know. And so this lady, sweet lady, is feeding these darling bears, and she names them. There's Cubby, and there's Fairy. She loved these bears. Well, she started getting one aggressive bear, even to the fact when the people would pick her up to come to an event, they would be scared to get out of their car because there were so many bears wandering around her little cabin. And so she got in one day, and she goes, you know what? I have a special bear. He's naughty bear. He's always the one causing trouble, you know, and her friends are like, are you nuts? You know, and anyway, long story short, what I guess had happened was Naughty Bear was picking on Fuzzy Bear and she went outside to yell at him and he ate her face off and she's dead. We don't want to mess around with things that were going to destroy us. And our tongue should be treated as a dangerous animal. Our tongue should be treated as something that could rip apart. And if we look at it that way, we're going to be a little more careful to watch what it does. Have you ever been surprised by what you said? That's me on an hourly basis. Seriously. And then I'll get to the point going, did I say that? I can't believe I just said that. Do you do that? It just... (laughs) I love honesty. I'm trying to be transparent, ladies, okay? So, we, we say things that we don't even mean to say. They just slip out. And you know what? We need to be really careful because our tongue lives in a wet place that's easy to slip. And you can slip on that wet tongue... And it can cause nothing but trouble. The tongue is a fire in a world of sin. Verse 7, for every kind of beast of bird, reptile can be tamed, but not mankind. Verse 8, no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. 
I've talked about before last week, sometimes the more we talk, the matter we get, right? The more we, it's kind of an amazing thing if you really think about it. And so we just need to be so careful. And it says, no man can tame this. It's an unruly evil. The tongue can only be tamed by a supernatural grace in prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit because it wants to spit out poison. It wants to. We need to guard it as we would a dangerous animals. Verse nine, out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. And my sisters, these things ought not to be so. We use it to worship prayer and pray and lift our hands. And then we use it to turn around and to cuss at somebody an hour later. Or like we said last week, cutting them off as they're driving out of the parking lot and they cut you off. Or a door ding. You know, all that stupid blah, blah. And all of a sudden, you know, then we're back at church. And oh, thank you, Jesus. The Bible's saying, you know what? This shouldn't be going on in your lives. And for you and me, we're both convicted because it is. It's hard to bridle our tongue, but with a supernatural move of the Holy Spirit, we can. And we can be those women of God. With it, we bless our Father, and then we curse men. Keep in mind that we are going to give an account for all the words that we say, the Bible says. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12. Verse 35, it says, A good woman out of the treasure of her heart brings forth good things. And an evil woman out of the treasure of her heart brings forth evil things. Verse 36, but I say to you, women, that you have an account on judgment day for the words you speak. Verse 37, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. We want to be that person that when we're speaking and we're saying over probably 2,000 words a day, that we're giving God glory. And we're looking for those opportunities to lift up the name of Jesus and not to drag each other down. We just want to be those kind of women that remember to be kind. It's important that Christian women be the kindest women in the world. I was thinking just the other night, what would we do if we lived in more Oklahoma? How we, we reach out to the people that are hurting there. What could have we what could we do if our church was there? I want to remind you that Jesus was gossiped about. They called Jesus illegitimate, a wine bibber, a glutton, friend of sinners, troublemaker, and a blasphemer. That is your savior. That is what gossip does. Your savior was gossiped about. And when you think about that, it just breaks my heart. The savior of the world was a victim of gossip. I think that's why the Bible talks so much about it and doesn't want us to go down that path. Out of the same mouth proceed, verse 10, blessings and cursings. My sisters, this ought not to be so. Verse 11, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? The answer to that is no. We have a little spring in our backyard in Idaho, and it's all fresh water. But stale water doesn't come out of the same place. It's all coming through the same flow. Fresh water is reviving. And he's saying here, does it fresh water and bitter water come out of the same opening? Verse 12, can a fig tree, my sister, bear olives and a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt and fresh water, which should break our hearts. We need to be careful of the jokes we say. We need to be careful of the jokes we laugh at. 
We need to be careful, especially of our slang words. We need to be careful not to say, oh, God, that's so funny. Stop saying God. Say, oh, gosh, or say, oh, that is. Why do Christian women say, oh, God, when the Bible says don't talk like that? It's one of the Ten Commandments. You should not take the name of your Lord Jesus Christ in vain. Do you? Do I? I didn't mean anything by it. It's like, oh, gosh. You said God. Don't take the name of your Lord in vain. God doesn't want us to be those kind of believers that are out. And we used to call it years ago, sloppy agape, where we just go, well, I'm saved. I can say anything I want to say. I can laugh at anything I want to laugh at. I can watch anything I want to watch. I'm saved. And then they read James and you go, well, I might have to like adjust what I'm doing a little bit. No spring yields both salt and fresh water. I want to speak Jesus. I want to learn that language. I want to learn it, and I want to be able to teach other people the language of Jesus, don't you? I don't want to be speaking earthly. Verse 13, who who is wise among you with understanding? Who is among you? Let them show by their good conduct that his works are done in meekness and in wisdom. And we talked about that yesterday or last week about how much that we, you know, our, our wisdom is knowledge applied. What good does it do you to be really wise in God's word if you're not giving anything out? And I'm thinking of somebody this morning and she knows exactly who it is, but she was just challenged this week. She had to step up. She's here this morning and she had to just step up. The Lord said, would you do this? And she said, I think I can. (laughs) I think I can. You know, we want to be those. What good does it do to have all this knowledge and never tell anyone anything about the Lord? And then it says, let your words be backed up with good conduct because now they're watching. We all make mistakes. We stumble in many matters is what the word of God does. But maybe the one with the tongue, we can challenge ourselves to be better with. Verse 14, you have bitter envy and strife and self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. When I was reading this and I was studying this, I was just going, I'm dying here. (laughs) This is just hard. Think about that. Do you have bitter envy? Well, I looked it up in the Hebrew. And it actually means every word in this chapter that says envy means jealous, bitter jealousy. Are you jealous? And I think that's a little bit easier for us to wrap our minds around. Are you jealous of anyone? Do you have bitter jealousy? You know, strife is the opposite and fighting of love and peace Jealousy and wisdom of God cannot live together in the same heart. And the reason, the way we get rid of jealousy is what? To simply confess it. Lord, I'm sorry. Do you know the covet game that Christians play? There's a covet game. I want what you have, and I want you to have something better. (laughs) Do you like that one? Yeah, yeah, because we don't want to be like jealous. So I want what you got, and then I hope you get better than that. We want to be very careful not to be jealous of one another or anything that's going on in the world that we love. And, and I thought that was really interesting because then when I kept reading it, I kept talking about envy. It was jealousy, jealousy. Verse 14, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not lie against the truth. Take inventory into your own heart. Aren't you blessed, ladies? We don't have to confess ourselves to some man sitting in a box. Seriously, some people feel they do. Aren't you blessed that you can just go and confess to the Lord anything you've done and that blood of Jesus just cleans you? That's what's saying. Don't lie against the truth in your own heart. If you have bitter envy, if you have jealousy, you have strife, you have contentions, you have a quick tongue. Don't lie in your heart 
And don't boast about it. Just confess it to Jesus. Because this wisdom, verse 15, does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. So what the Bible is saying here is if you're fighting amongst yourselves and you're having jealousy, that it's actually from the evil one. And so many times we'll look at the outside sins of someone. Oh, they smoke. Oh, they drink. Oh, they, well, we forget the ones that are really hard to take care of. And that's outbursts of wrath and venting and gossip. Those are the ones that hurt and that are hard to get rid of. But many times we, we put value on different sins, don't we? This one's worse than this one here and this one. And God's going, they're all sin. And that we take inventory into our own lives that nobody will judge you. I like that. If you go and confess it before the Lord and you're taking steps to do what you can to correct things, no one's going to judge you. The Bible says, judge yourself that no one else will be the judge of you. Verse 16, for where jealousy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing will be there. I have been around people that are jealous and self-seeking, and it is just a massive confusion to be around them. Wherever they go, it's kind of like um, that Peanuts character, you know, he's like that little, what's his name? Pig Pan, and that's an appropriate name for him, because wherever he goes, there's dirt flying around. Is that you? Are you a pig pen that wherever you go, there's a cloud of dust and dirt and sin flying around you? There's confusion. And then our conversations, they need to be scented with Jesus Christ. Our conversations need to reflect what's going on in our heart, that we are changing and we are giving God the glory. But the wisdom that is from above is first clean. The Hebrew says it's clean. Oh, ladies, and if there's ever a day that we need to be clean before the Lord, it's now. We need to be just clean through his word and clean through his blood and praying to him and talk to him. The first, it says here, but the wisdom that it from above is first clean. I love that. Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits without partiality and without being a hypocrite. So let's just break that down for just a moment here. True wisdom really only comes from above. And peace will follow purity. When you have that in your life, you're peaceful, you're clean, and you look at things a little bit differently than you did. Willing to yield. You don't have to win the argument. That's so hard for us, isn't it? Come on. Give me a nod. Don't you just want to win that argument, whether it's with your kids or with it's your husband? You want to win that. Okay? And you're going to present why. Because this. Have we learned how to be willing to yield? I know that's hard for all of us. And we need to pray daily. Lord, keep a bit on my mouth today that I can let it go. It's a good word. Good words. Let it go. Some things really ladies, I'm going to clue you in on something aren't worth fighting about. And the things you say will haunt you for the rest of your life when you're cruel. And I just gave you that example. I won that argument. I broke his heart. It's not important to win. Let it Go, willing to yield without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I want to be a peacemaker, don't you? That maybe somebody's having a problem with somebody and you're like, you know what? Let's just pray for that person right now. I'm sure they didn't mean to hurt your feelings instead of going, well, I've had that problem with her too. And let me tell you something. Now let me write it on Facebook. (laughs) Then you know what corrects me up is all the comments. I hate them too. (laughs) Oh, 
be careful. Careful that we reflect what Jesus said, because we all have those tendencies, don't we? Well, that's just sleepy time. <laughs> Did you hear that? It was like a little charms. That we all have that tendency to want to go astray and let our mouths just run wild. But thanks be to God who gives us victory, right? You're not the same as you were yesterday. Today is a brand new slate, brand new board. And let's write on it the things that God wants us to say. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we all just take this in. And Lord, I pray right now you settle it into each of our hearts. Lord, where we could have said something nice, we said something cruel. And Father, we want to be those women of God. We want to be those women that reflect you, Heavenly Father, that we say things that are uplifting. And Father, it's so tempting. The tongue is so hard to create tame, but yet, Lord, it's so important that we do. And Father, we ask you now, Lord, as we talk amongst ourselves, that we can be transparent and share what we're struggling with, that we can have prayer for each other. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you put this in the word. And even though it's, it's convicting for us to read, we know it's for our own good. And Lord, we thank you for your wonderful forgiveness. And that, Lord Jesus, that uh, every day is new. Every hour is new with you, Father, in your precious name. Amen.